Thank you, Lord. I'm trying not to cry. I'm trying to... I just sense God is crying over what's happening in Israel. I think it's breaking his heart. And every time I think about it, I start crying. Thank you, Lord. We're so, we're so blessed Amen. to have our heritage. But you know, folks, this has been going on a long time. Ishmael and Isaac, the Bible tells us that they'll be warring against each other till the end of times. The Bible tells us a lot about, uh, Pastor Jack, is, he's really felt led to talk about the times that we live in right now. And I, I hope everyone is aware that Jesus is coming soon. I think he's getting ready to load up the bus. And, uh, but you know, there's the Old Testament and how God dealt with situations. God moved, miracles happened. But the New Testament is, is different for us because of our faith. You understand that? So I just want to share a little bit this morning about uh, what's happening right now. Uh, you probably know a lot of this stuff. Oh. Oh, I feel good. She, t she sewed it on. Whee! Thank you, Miss Robin. In the world today, there are approximately 17 million Jews. Okay? Today's last count, there's over 2 million 100,000 Muslims. The area, the area that's going on right now is, uh, I mean, I want to get this straight. The area of Israel is 8,630 square miles. <laughs> the area of the Muslim nations is 1.8 billion. You've got this little sliver of land that two million Muslims want to take over when, when, they own, when, when they own all of it. But does everybody realize this has been going on forever? There's a hatred for God. There's been a hatred. And uh, uh, the fighting is going to, this is what's going to cause the end times. Or, as the end times are, are happening right before our eyes. But God has a plan. Does everybody know God has a plan? I want to share God's plan from the New Testament, and then I want to share His plan, what He did in the Old Testament. Amen? Turn your Bibles to Timothy chapter 3. The times that we're living in. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Paul writing to Timothy and he says, This know also that in the last days perilous, hideous times will occur. He's saying this is the last of the last. This is the end of the fourth quarter. This is not the starting of the third quarter. He said this is the last in the last days. In other words, after the, that last, there is nothing else. So he is saying to Timothy, in, know this, that in the last days, perilous times will occur, will come. And what's amazing about this scripture is, it all has to do with man. Now, it does say about earthquakes and rumors of wars and stuff like that. But Paul is really zeroing in on the heart of mankind has changed. And it starts off by saying, for men shall be lovers of themselves. Selfishness is the, the present day evil 
in the world. Would everybody agree with that? Amen. You see it at church. You see it in your business. You see it at sporting events. You see that it's, it's mostly about me, my desire, my talent, what I can do. And Paul is seeing this, written over 2,000 years ago, that man is going to be a lover of himself. Covetous, boasters. <laughs> Does anybody watch football, lady? You remember, everybody remember Earl Campbell? Do you know what Earl Campbell would do when he made a touchdown? He would hand the football to the referee. And now there are choreographed dances. <laughs> Have you ever seen that? I mean, there's eight or nine of these football players will get up there and they'll do a, they'll do a, a, they'll do a dance and a high fives and everything. Proud, blasphemers. Does everybody know blaspheming? To attribute something evil to God. And it goes on to say that man will call evil good and, ev and, and uh, evil good and good evil. And we've come to a, well, I want to say nation, but I, we've come to a world that celebrates sin. And when you speak against it, you're marked as a heretic, as a uh, whatever the term they use. Yeah. And yeah, you're a hater if you don't go along, if you don't. And we celebrate that. But Paul, he saw this. Without natural affections. Truce breakers, false, accus false accusers, fierce despiser of those who are good, traitors, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. It, it sounds bad if we stopped right there. Verse 9, but they shall proceed no further in their folly. For their folly shall be manifest into all men as theirs also was. Verse 11, persecutions, afflictions, which came upon me in Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, which persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Verse 14, what are we to do as Christians in this time of turmoil in Israel? And, but continue, everybody say, but continue. That's our hope, folks, right there. But continue in that which you have learned, and not only what you've learned, but you are assured of. What you would lay down your life to protect. People are by, they're, they're dying this morning, or this afternoon, if you were in Israel. Good and bad are dying. And we would say well, it has to come to this, but what's led up to this over these 2,000 years, there's always a halt. There's always that side that said, okay, let's stop this, let's, let's pray for peace. I declare there will be no peace. There are two sides right now. They're not going to stop this until there's one side. Which is, which is what's going to have to happen. They've done this a thousand times over the two years. They fight, they skirmish. One side starts winning, and so now all of a sudden, oh, let's, let's peace, let's have peace. But the day after they have peace, one side is still going on. There was a time in the Bible when this happened, and the nation that came against Israel was totally wiped out. Men, women, children. The Bible says they even cut down their orchards. 
I don't know if that's going to have to happen. But you know what's good? Just as God showed up in the Old Testament, my goodness gracious, he's going to show up here. Hallelujah. That just hit me. He's the same God. Hallelujah. He's not going to put up with this garbage. He, he's going to show forth. He's going to open the Red Sea. You know, Jack was sharing a while ago, and he said, uh, he said uh, you can speak to a mountain. We can do that. And if God said we could speak to a mountain and command it to be picked up and removed and cast into the sea and don't doubt in our hearts, all we got to do is speak it. I don't know how God's going to do it, but God's going to be glorified. And you know what? As I was praying this morning, he said, uh, he said to Jack, he said, I'm a jealous God. I'm not going to share my glory with no one. In other words, man's not going to get credit. God said, uh uh. I'm going to do, wow. I'm going to do what only I can do so that man is going to look to me as their salvation. Thank you, Lord. But continue in that which you have learned and that which you are assured of. And, also, and remember, it's me that taught you all that. <laughs> Paul, Paul said, now remember, that's me. And then he makes this statement in 16. All Scripture, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. Is, the Bible says, God breathed. That's it. And is advantageous or beneficial. How many know that? All Scripture. And it's beneficial because it's going to tell me what's right. It's going to tell me what's not right. It's going to tell me how to get right. And it's going to tell me how to stay right. So that we might be the men and women called into this glorious kingdom that we're part of. So as, as Christians, spirit-filled Christians, tongue-talking Christians... The answer to the world's problem is in our mouth. If we can speak to a mountain and command it to be picked up and removed and cast into the sea and, and, and we, we doubt not. So the Old Testament, and I'm going to quote a couple of scriptures about God's action when an enemy was, uh, was coming against them. Amen? Second Chronicles 19. I like this. I've liked it ever since I wrote it. Jehoshaphat. Here comes the bad guys coming against Israel. Jehoshaphat happens to be the leader. It said, It came to pass after this also that the children of Moab, the Moabites, the Amorites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Are you seeing that's what we're seeing? They came to battle. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side, Syria. And be, behold, they be in uh, Hazaron, Tamar, which is Engled. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord. Wow. Wow. Jehoshaphat said, We need God. We need to seek the face of God and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judea, Judea. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord. I think that's what Israel's doing right now. You know, when you're backed into a corner, the only place you can go is you better call on God. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. You know, all through the Old Testament, anytime you cried out to God, He answered them. Amen? Anytime there was something going on against the, the state or the people, once they cried out, it always says, God 
heard them, and God answered them. Amen. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judea and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, here he goes to God. God of our fathers, art thou God in heaven and rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen, and in thy hand is there not power and might, so that none is able to withstand against thee. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Verse 9, If then when evil comes, as the sword judgment or pestilence or famine, ye stand before this house, and in thy presence, for thy name is in this house, and I cry unto thee in our affliction. Then thou wilt hear and answer. I believe the people are over there crying right now out to the Lord. Amen? Yes. Verse 15. Be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours but mine. Thank you, Lord. Are you glad to be part of that? Amen. We're part of that. For the battle is not yours, it's mine. Amen. Verse 17, you shall not need to fight in this battle. <laughs> I like what's getting ready to happen. Verse 21, believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, so shall ye profit. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord, and that should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army, and to say, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever. And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set an ambushment against the children of the enemies, and they were smitten. Thank you, Lord. So God spoke to the people, spoke to Jehoshaphat, and I'm sure he said, how are we going to do this, Lord? And he said, well, let me tell you something, Jehoshaphat, you're not going to need to fight in this war. I've already fought the battle, and we've already won. I want you to celebrate. And so he sent out the men in the tutus, the dancers and the praisers, and they went out before the enemy, and confusion ripped the hundreds of thousands of enemy that were there. Right. And it says it so confused them, they started fighting against each other. <laughs> and the Bible says that it took three, I don't know why an army takes gold and silver with them. But anyway, the enemy's all laying around dead, and it took them three, four days to pick up all the, the jewels. So did not only God give them a victory, he took the wealth of the wicked and gave it to the, to the nation of Israel. Is that awesome? Yes. Folks, we're part of that. Yes. We're part of that. Thank you, Lord. This other one. So... So we have an Old Testament uh, battle. And then in the New Testament, we have King uh, David. And King David scribbled Psalms 23. David at that time was fearful for his life because of, of Saul. Does everybody know that? Saul did not like the attention that David received. You know, they were dancing and say, Saul got his thousand, but David got his 10,000. Saul didn't like that. So Saul is, is attempting, he, he's wanting to find out where is David so I can get rid of him. In the midst of this, David hiding in caves and running for his life, he penned Psalms 23. The Lord. Now, just consider where David is right now, in fearful, in fear of his life. The Lord is my shepherd. 
I shall not want, desire, or need. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Amen. Now, if you knew anything about sheep, sheep don't like that. I mean, they like still waters. They don't like rustling waters. So the good shepherd is taking them to places of peace. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Even as Christians, we have opportunity to walk through fire. We have, we have an opportunity, but the, the phrase there is, I shall walk through because my God Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. I saw a man the other day on TV, and he was saying that your first thought is usually your fear thought, but your second thought is your victory. Everybody understand that? Something happens, what's the first thing we do? We fear. We get a notice, you know, we go to the doctor and he says something, and our first thought is fear. But we're not, we don't act on our first thought. Amen. Right after that bad report, we say, no, no, but my God, my God shall take care of me. My God shall provide. Amen. My God is the one that by his stripes I am healed. So don't be moved by your first thought. You're not going to hell because you had a bad thought. <laughs> the first thought, we're human beings, amen? Amen. I will walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest, I think, boy, I, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemy. Thank you, Lord. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hang on with me. What's that second? Okay, hang with me. I'm pulling a jack. You ever see Jack? You ever see Jack when he preaches? He's got 18 pages and he's looking, let me get through this. Hey, <laughs> Second Chronicles 20. That's where I was going. No, I don't want to go there. Let's go to 2 Kings. Is that it? 2 Kings, 2 Kings 6. Anyway, back to the back to the Bible. Oh get take give it. Hold on. Are we in Kings? Second Kings? Second, that's after First Kings, right? I have been to college. I got it, I got it, I got it. Anyway, the, the, I'm in the Bible. Oh, I'm in, I'm in 2 Kings 6. I'm going I'm to paraphrase it. I don't want to confuse y'all. <laughs> the king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel, and uh, he's trying to find out where uh, the king of Israel is, and uh, every time he goes someplace, uh, he's, he, he doesn't get there, and finally someone comes and tells him, well, uh, there's a prophet in Israel and he knows, 
he goes and tells them what you're, what you're going to do. And he says, well, that's not right. So anyway, uh, and one of his servants said, no, my Lord, O king, but Elisha, the prophet that is in Israel, telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in your bedroom. Well, this prophet's making uh, the, the king of Syria upset anyway. So he's, the, the king of Syria says, well, go and find out where this turkey is. We got to go find out where he is. And so they found out where he was. So here they come. Verse 16. No, I want to go back. And he said, uh, anyway, it's morning and uh, Elisha wants some coffee. So he sends his servant outside to make some coffee. And the servant goes outside and looks in the hills and there's 185,000 enemy in the hills. Now, I don't know about you, but I'd be concerned. He just went out to make coffee and now he sees the hills are full of 185,000 enemy. So he goes back in and says, excuse me, sir, but uh, we're in trouble. And you know what? Is it Elisha, Jack, that says that? Elisha. Elisha said, uh, you know, the servant saying, we're in trouble. There's, there's two of us and there's 185,000 of them. And Elisha prayed to the Lord and said, Lord, open his eyes that he might see there's more with us than be with them. And the Lord opened his eyes and he looked in the mountains and there were, I don't know who they were, but there were more that were with Israel than were against him. And then Elisha said, Lord, if you would blind their eyes, their eyes, which the Lord did. God has a way that's not human. And God is the same today as he was back then. God is faithful. He was faithful. He is faithful. And he will continue to be faithful to his word. And, and like I said, I, I start crying when I, when I think about what's going on. But we really don't have to worry because God is working. We sang that song. Even when we don't see him working, he's working. And God is going to get the glory. He's going to be glorified in this. And when it's over, many are going to come to the Lord. And you know, we're so closer to the last days. It said in the last days that there's going to be a great outpouring of the Spirit of God. And I just believe that when people see what our God is doing and has done, I believe our church isn't big enough. Amen. Amen. I believe, believe people are going to be hungry for the real thing. And like Paul said, continue in that which you've learned and that which you are assured of. How many know it's getting close? But I like whose side I'm on. I like whose side I'm on. And he said, it's, it's not going to be a battle that you understand. Sure, there's, there's a battle going on right now. There are, there are people being killed. There are uh, uh, places being destroyed and everything. But uh, God knew about this. This didn't surprise him on uh, the 7th of October. He didn't wake up and say, oh my gosh, what's happening? God has known this. And the same God that delivered David from the lions and from the tigers, the same God that parted the Red Sea, he's the same God today. But he's doing it through our faith. Our faith. 
If you've got a mountain in your life, your answer is in your mouth. Amen. You can quail a storm. Jesus gave us so many examples. He's in the boat. He told his disciples, we're going to the other side. You know, if Jesus tells you you're going to make it, you is going to make it. Amen. He told his disciples, we're going to uh, uh, Gad. Uh, I've got ministry over there, so we're going over there. Well, they get in the boat and a storm comes up. And the disciples are crying. Don't you care about us, Lord? We're in the midst of this storm and you're, you're, down, you're back there sleeping. Don't you care about us? Of course he cared about them. But they woke him up. He stood up in the bow of that boat and he put his finger and he said, to the storm, peace be still. I believe that was a, a, a moment for the disciples learning about God. And he says, the storm quit. And we know that story that the, de uh, the demoniac was on the other side of the, uh, in, in Gad, and with 2,000 demons. I have uh, had encounters with, I think, two demons. One on one, and I won. Uh, one of them was because I, I knew the Word of God. Amen. And uh, a statement was made about someone that uh, there was no hope for them, that they would live the rest of their life in that condition. And I could have I wavered because, well, this is an educated man. He, he have been to college. I could have weighed to that and said, wow. But my, my first thought was fear, but my second thought was, not in my house. And I started praying in tongues. Folks, pray in tongues as much as you can. That's the voice of God. That's the language of God. And under my breath, I just said, Lord, I praise you and thank you that by the stripes of Jesus, there's healing in this place. And healing came. Amen. Healing is. Amen. Amen. I'd like to go back and find him, but the power of the word of God is in our mouth. And we need to be praying for this outcome. We need to be praying for both sides. Amen? Amen. We're, we're to pray for the peace of Israel and we're to be, what it says about what we should do with our enemies. Feed them, give them food. But this is not going to continue. There, there's going to be an end to this and I believe God's going to be glorified. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Stand to your feet. I'm so glad Jack has felt, Lord, felt uh, to do end times because uh, it's, it's going to be fresher than the Houston Chronicle. It is. It, we're, gonna, we're seeing stuff, but God's going to be glorified. Something's going to happen that man might try to take credit for it, but it's not going to happen. God says, I'm a jealous God, and I don't share my glory with another man. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. God's good. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Well, I think, I think we found out who the real pastor was today. No. Anybody that can stop church to find a button <laughs> and not continue until it's sewed back onto his jacket before he preaches, he's really in charge here, folks. No. It's not me. I might sign the paychecks, but... <laughs> My, 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 that was good. Thank you, Lord. We, uh, we don't ever want to let uh, an opportunity go by. Thank you, Lord. If you don't know what's valuable, 
If you've never made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, Thank you, then today's Lord. your day. And you're not joining a cult or a club. You're not becoming a Jew or a Gentile. You're becoming a believer. Thank you, Lord. And you get ushered in to the very kingdom and presence of God and all the rights and privileges that are associated with that relationship God wants to impart into you through His Son, Jesus Christ, who is the ultimate prize. Jesus wants to live in your heart. But He loves you so much that He gave you a free will. Thank you, Lord. Yes. And He said, I stand at the door and I knock today. And if all you'll do, if you'll just crack that door just a little bit, I know it's scary. I know there's unknowns associated with it. Maybe you've tried it before. Maybe you've confessed a thousand times. But let today be the day where you crack that door with faith and you say, Jesus, I want to know you. Thank you, Lord. It's so simple. Will you pray this prayer with me this Thank morning? Those that are online, just pray this prayer. Just say, Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus I want to know you. I want to know you. I invite you into my life. I invite you into my life. I invite you into my heart. I invite you into my heart. Fill me with your presence. Fill me with your presence. Come and dwell inside of me. Come and dwell inside of me. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Heal me of all my diseases. Deliver me from all addictions. Deliver me from all addictions. Give me a hunger for your word. Give me a hunger for your word. Guide me to a good church. Guide me to a good church. But most importantly. Most importantly. Be my best Be friend. Be my best friend. I want to know you. I want to know you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, we Lord. We receive it, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We receive it. Thank you, Lord. We receive it. We receive your presence. Thank you, Lord. We receive it by faith today. Amen. If that's the first time you've prayed that or a thousandth, but you know that it connected today, we want to help you in that journey. What we do very well here at West Houston is we're a great discipleship church. God has blessed us with a lot of really good teachers to instruct us how to live and how to walk this thing out. I've been in this thing for almost 33 years, and I'm still learning things Thank every you, day. Thank you, Lord. But you're never going to start the journey until you get on the right path. Amen. That's why they called it the way. Mm -hmm. This is called the way. And Jesus has offered you everything that he has. Thank you, Lord. And now we start taking those steps of faith. Amen? Amen. Pastor? Thank you, Lord. Yes, sir. Can, can we just do one other thing? The, uh, Jesus knew that his time on earth was up. And he said, tarry ye in Jerusalem for the Holy Ghost. He's going to be just like me, but he's going to give you power. He's going to give you power. But wait for it. And they, had, they, they waited ten, uh, 10 days. And the Bible says the Holy Spirit fell. 500 started out. 380 didn't wait. 120 waited 10 days for this gift that God was going to give to the church. And on the 10th day, the Holy Spirit filled the place. Tongues of fire said people started prophesying, speaking in other tongues. There's, there's, there's more that you get than just tongues, but I believe that's the greatest thing. The, the prophet, I mean, the apostle Paul said, I speak in tongues more than you all, but I'd rather that you would prophesy. People that are filled with the Holy Ghost prophesy. If you're here today, you've accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and you need that power in your life for edification, for comfort, to hear from God and then to speak to His oracles, all you have to do is ask. It said, if we be an evil parents know how to give good gifts to our children, how much more the Lord will give the Holy Spirit to those that ask. So here's what happens. A lot of people have come to this altar and they've asked for it, but they haven't felt anything. The Holy Spirit is not a felt. It is not a feeling. It's by faith you ask to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And it happens. It might be today. 
It might, I've had people say it was in their shower when they went home. But speaking in an unknown tongue, I truly believe that's what God spoke in the garden with Adam and Eve. They spoke in a heavenly language. And it's a beautiful language. God desires you shall receive power. Amen. If that's you today, we don't have to lay hands on you. You just need by faith. Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Let's all do that. Let's lift up our hands. Thank you, Lord. And whether you've already been baptized with the Holy Spirit, it's a continual filling. Yes, thank you, Lord. So each and every one of us, we can receive just a fresh, fresh power, fresh drink, fresh anointing today. Father, by faith right now, yes, Lord, thank you, Jesus, you're the baptizer. I'm asking you, Father, to fill each and every person in this room. And Lord, those that have never, ever, ever spoken in other tongues, Lord, or received the baptism, Father, I just pray right now in the name of Jesus, be filled with the Holy Ghost. Be filled with the Spirit of God. Be filled to overflowing. Out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. Father, we invite the Comforter, the Counselor, the Parakletos. We invite Him, the person of the Holy Spirit, into our lives. And we receive Him by faith. And we believe it, and thank we you, thank Lord. you for it, and we speak it. Now begin to speak in other tongues for a moment. Thank you, Lord. Okay, stop. Stop. Now you see who, it's not some wild, crazy thing that takes you over, and you <laughs> run around the room, and you froth at the mouth, and you swing from chandeliers. Thank you, Lord. He's a gentleman. Thank you, Lord. He's the comforter. Thank you, Lord. All you have to do is give him your mouth. Thank you, Lord. By faith in Jesus' Thank name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Man. Thank you, Lord. Good, Jack. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I encourage you to operate, discipline Amen. yourself, pray in the Holy Spirit, pray in tongues often and early. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, Pastor Michelle is doing her no fear party, so if you have kids, just gently kind of stick your head back there um, and thank her. Uh, she puts an enormous amount of work into this Amen. Uh, to bless those children. So, you know, when I used to bartend or uh, was in the club world, I was always say at the end of the night, don't forget to take care of your bartenders and waitresses, you know, on the way out of the bar, out of the club. But bless those that are back there serving. Amen. Thank them. Bless them. They are serving so that you can be in here. Amen? Uh, if you have Christmas uh, information about the outreach, Miss Barbara is back at the table. If you brought your gifts, you can bring them to that spot too. Um, if you've had a go moment, and we're still talking about go moments. Has anybody had a go moment this week where you got to share your faith with somebody? We are looking for opportunities. Look at me. This is vital. This is vital. I don't want to keep going, but I need to. I feel like I need to say something too, just about Israel and about everybody that's dying over there. Unless they've accepted Christ, are going to hell. There is no special dispensation for anybody. Through the blood of Jesus Christ, He went into captivity and He led all those Old Testament saints up into heaven. David and Solomon and all those great people. He preached Himself to them in captivity and then took them to heaven. But everybody since then, we all have to receive Christ as our Savior. There's nobody that's just built in because of where they were born or who they are. So it's a, it's a double tragedy over there. That unless they all receive Christ, and God loves the terrorist as much as he loves the Jew. He loves them both fiercely. So it is vital. Amen. Vital, 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 vital that we pray and believe for peace for all of them. Amen? Go moments. Tell people about Jesus. We don't want anybody to go to hell. We love you. Jesus is Lord. We'll